Hi, I'm Lisa St. Odom. I'm an actress and singer, and I've been working with Dexter of Shadow Dog Productions for something like six years now. Hi, my name is Karen Mara. I'm one half of the Black Out Who Tips podcast, and we've been working for, with Dexter for close to five years now, somewhere around in there, yeah. yeah. So we're talking about women in the male-dominated entertainment industry. Um, thoughts from you, Karen, or... I think I think for me, podcasting is very male dominated. Yeah, I would imagine. Um, it's very sports dominated, mm -hmm. and I think what I'm realizing about it is that women's voices are beginning to be louder and stronger. I think a lot of women are intimidated because mm -hmm. it's male dominated. I think a lot of women think that their voices aren't valid. Mm -hmm. Um. I think that when a lot of women comes, when it comes to podcasting, I think sometimes the technology part can be intimidating for some women to learn what an RSS feed is, mm -hmm. to learn how to record, to learn how to use all these various different things. Mm -hmm. um, I know that for a lot of women, just in their everyday life, women's voices have a tendency to be critiqued more, mm -hmm. just between the way they uh, their inflections of their voices, their opinions, how they view things. Uh, I know for our podcast, any a lot of times any letters that come in, a lot of times attack the, my voice, the way I sound, the way I articulate. Um, and sometimes, like, my anger sometimes is not valid. Or I've, you know, you even have people that critique my laugh, you know. And so that, that's <laughs> because it's, it, what I do is it's more of an audio form versus mm -hmm. a video form. So... I think uh, that it's the same thing that happens to NPR. It's an NPR, and NPR has a generated letter when people type in that it picks up certain words. So it picks up critiques voice, and they send it to a junk mailbox, and the person get an automatic reply. We know you're replying about a female voice because we never get complaints about our male voices, mm -hmm. and we're going to disregard your letter. And oh, so wow. um, that is just something about that. So particularly industry that I'm in, I, I can understand and see why women are, they don't feel valid or they don't feel like the industry is designed for them. Mm -hmm. One good thing, in my opinion, about uh, the field that I'm in, because it's more sound and not visual, you can get women of all different backgrounds mm -hmm. more apt into it. And I think with the internet being as open as it is right now, I think that you are you are allowing a voice to the voiceless because there are a lot of voiceless women out there who have these opinions, who's very passionate. They have these feelings and emotions and they want to get them out there. And I think this platform allows them to, particularly what I do. But what about you in the film industry? How does this affect you? It was so interesting to hear about the critique of voices because what you do is mainly oral as people listening. And for actresses, of course, working with Shadow Dog Productions, it's mostly voice work. But we've also done film and um, television pilots and things like that. And so for actresses on camera, it's a lot about how you look, right? Mm -hmm. So it comes down to not about your acting chops or um, if you're right for the role, but if you look a certain way, which right. can be incredibly frustrating. But you know the voice thing is really interesting and the way women um, say something as opposed to the way a man might say something when they're saying the same thing. Mm -hmm. I have a great story about this. I can laugh about it now because it's been a few weeks. But I was in a meeting of mostly men, maybe seven or eight men, and um, myself and one other woman were the only two in the meeting. And um, they were asking for suggestions about how to um, take care of a particular problem. And I said, why don't we have um, a committee assemble, sort of like a doctoral thesis committee, to listen to these issues. And um, the man leading the meeting sort of nodded and moved on, and we had other discussions. And then a man, probably 20 years older than me, a few minutes later said, what if we had a committee get together, sort of like a doctoral thesis committee, and they listened to these issues? And they all said, oh, that's a great idea. That's what we should do. And we moved forward to make that suggestion. No one ever acknowledged that he said the exact same thing I said, but because I'm a woman and younger and it seemed somehow not as valid a solution when I suggested it. And I was sitting in that meeting going, did no one hear that? Am I invisible? Why am I here? Right. Right? They, they've actually done studies in, and they've done studies in meetings and they said that 
when women talk and if a man interrupts her in the middle of her speaking, all the attention leaves her and goes directly to him. Mm -hmm. Um, the, and also, uh, when it comes to emotions, mm -hmm. if a man is upset or angry about something, his anger is considered fiery, it's considered passionate, mm -hmm. it's considered, um, you know, driven. Yeah. If a woman gets angry, and even if her anger is valid, it's considered emotional, mm -hmm. it's considered... Irrational. Right, irrational, mm -hmm. like it's completely dismissed, mm -hmm. and it, it becomes... Being a female, it becomes very frustrating because I know that my viewpoints and how I feel about things are just as valid as a man, and sometimes even more valid. But a lot of times I think that when it comes from a female body, people just have a tendency to dismiss it, even though the females... And I think that goes back to the patriarchy of how the society is brought up. Like, the man is supposed to be in control. The right. man is supposed to lead. The man is supposed to kind of tell the pretty woman what to do, mm -hmm. you know. And when you also, I know for me particularly, when you talk about being a woman and being a female, those are things we can relate across the board but I know in addition to that sometimes race plays a factor absolutely which is something people have a tendency to shun away from once you start talking about the the, the factors but it's like it's like almost like you have a a tear sometimes mm -hmm. and when it comes to quote-unquote female tears mm -hmm. you have um and, and, and this is why when it comes to uh, allyship and things like that, we actually need to work together. Right. Because yeah. I can take my issues to you, and then, which, which is sad, yeah. you have to speak on my behalf. <laughs> which is be ridiculous. Right. But I should be willing to do that right. as a friend and sister and person. Right. And I think that sometimes, though, that becomes a barrier sometimes. And to yeah. me, that causes a division. And mm -hmm. that's what makes it hard for people to work together mm -hmm. because I think every woman should be able to speak on her own behalf. Right. Um, but the way it's layered, you almost have to go through other channels. Mm -hmm. And and, and particularly whenever you're dealing with a female, it's amazing that even the female that actually everybody should be listening to is even annoyed too. Yeah. Ignored too. And yeah. sometimes that can become very frustrating. But mm -hmm. I do think that things are improving. Mm -hmm. I think that technology has allowed people to, particularly women, to voice their opinions. Social media has, mm -hmm. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You know, people feel various different ways. I think um, these platforms have allowed women to have agencies over their own bodies, over their own voices, mm -hmm. and particularly with actresses and things, it it chops out the middle channel. Now mm -hmm. I don't have to pay somebody to promote on my behalf. I can go directly to my audience. I don't, you know, I can put stuff on Instagram. I can Snapchat. I can, you know, do these things, Facebook Live. And it allows me to speak on my own behalf. And it allows people to hear my voice for truly what it is. And it allows the people that see me, that agree with me, to feel like they're not alone. I mean, how do I you feel like that? I was just thinking that before women might feel isolated in a male-dominated industry, right. but now because of social media, we can see one another talking about our own issues. We can see high-profile actresses and women in the entertainment industry, like Jennifer Lawrence, right. speaking up for pay equality for women and all sorts of issues like this. So we know that we're not alone. We know that we're not the crazy woman in the room. We are one of many, and our voice is valid, even though it's different. And I think that's the key, whether you're a woman, whether you're a person of color, different feels scary to some people. Yes. It feels threatening. It feels somehow maybe not as valid as what is the same. I'm more likely to listen to someone who's like me, unfortunately, than someone who's different. We need to be listening to each other. Right. And hopefully social media gives us that opportunity to share with one another in that way. So here's a question. Um, so, so my impression, which may be wrong, is that um, the podcasting is relatively wide open as a fairly new world. Mm -hmm. Making a film has a lot of technology and male-dominated stuff in it. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of wondering, in, in your experience, in the time you've been doing it, what changes have you seen, you know, and what changes would you like to see? Mm -hmm. you? Yeah. Well, I'm seeing, I believe, and maybe it's the world in which I'm moving, but I am seeing 
uh, a change in the scripts that I'm reading, the, the material, and the type of um, person who's casting and what they're looking for. It used to be they were looking for always the pretty fit woman in her 20s, and that was kind of every role. And um, now I'm seeing more opportunities for all sorts of different types of women and I'm also seeing a change in um, the scripts themselves what they're looking for which is why I like working here with Shadow Dog and and I say this all the time every chance I get when I'm interviewed about it but um, the scripts that I read for Shadow Dog almost always have powerful female roles and um, yeah all of his scripts I feel like pass the Bechdel test that test that says two women get in the room and they talk about something other than men or their relationships and I feel like every one of his scripts is like that I never feel like I'm a pawn like I'm a side piece to a male dominated story and that's what I'm looking for and that's what I feel like is changing not just with Shadow Dog although he's an, a great example but in a lot of other scripts and um, I feel comfortable passing on the ones that don't appeal to me, right. that make me just the side character, because I know that something else is going to come along, mm -hmm. and I, I can wait for it, and it's certainly worth the wait. So those are the changes I'm seeing. I'd like to see more of that. I'd like to see more women behind the camera writing the scripts, um, that sort of thing. But I feel very empowered and very encouraged by the men in the industry who... Um, are working on the behalf of women. I don't right. feel like it's an us versus them thing. Um, I think there are plenty of men that are standing up for women in this industry and making good opportunities for us and listening and asking for our voices. And so I appreciate those men, you know, coming along beside us with our issues. So that's where I am. What about you? I think for me, it's changed a lot. Uh, podcasting itself is about 15 years old. But actually, podcasting, as far as being to the masses, is a shorter period of time. Mm -hmm. I think when smartphones became available, it got to the masses. Because prior to that, you basically had to be a college kid in the basement. You had to know how to download. You had to know how to move your stuff over to Apple. It was, it was, it was, a lot, it was very tech-heavy. But now all I gotta do is, is get a get a Stitcher app, get somebody app on my phone, and press play. And so I think with that, it it opens up a whole new genre. And I think the industry itself is evolving because you do have more women voices than ever. Mm -hmm. I think that you do have women, like you said, they're talking about things other than men, other than you know husbands, other than you know how terrible men are type of mm -hmm. thing. Um, or other than them seeking for a man or looking for a man or whatever it, is, it may be. You have women, they're talking about things that directly affect them. They might be talking about things that might be women-specific, like they might be talking about maybe, you know, the hair of women's rights. They might be talking about LGBTQ rights, things that affect them as the individual woman. So now you have this whole genre that has opened up in this field where you don't have the angry woman. You don't have a husband and a wife, and the wife is always that downer because there are a lot, there are tons of podcasts out there, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. that, that kind of structure towards that. Mm -hmm. Or the woman is the sidekick, or like you said, or the background, yeah. you know, or the contrarian type of thing. You mm -hmm. have more podcasts where there are no men even involved. Mm -hmm. I've seen more of that where you have podcasts where it's just strictly women mm -hmm. and they talk about things that affect them. They might talk about race. Mm -hmm. They might talk about their, their, their views on varying different things and, and me, myself, I love that. I've seen that door open and I know for me personally, uh, when you're talking about men that, that are allies with my husband, it has helped me a lot mm -hmm. because he actually encouraged me to talk more and to be more vocal. Because the thing about women, it's not that women don't have opinions. Women have a lot of different opinions. I think it's the fact that society tells women that your opinion overall is not valid. Mm -hmm. It makes you feel like your opinion and how you feel, people don't want to hear it. And it's not going to make a difference in the world. And it's not going to change anybody's life, even though that's completely opposite of what happens. Mm -hmm. But that's the way it feels. And I think with the audio side that I have... I, I never realized, because when we initially started, I would told my husband, I said, well, if you find another co-host, you ain't got to worry about me. And he was like, no, 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 no. He was like, I would not do this show without you. Mm -hmm. And it's the best decision I ever made. And mm -hmm. I didn't realize till we started getting feedback that people would write into the show and say, Karen, I agree. Karen, this is how I feel. I understand your passion. You changed my views. You changed my perspective. Mm -hmm. And... 
that's big. And the same thing with you and you taking certain roles mm -hmm. is some little girl somewhere that's watching that looks at that and says, I know I can do that too. That's right. And I feel like that with, when I do my audio, I feel like there's some woman somewhere that has gone through some of the same things that I've gone through that mm -hmm. feels the same passion or rage or fire that I have inside of me and just didn't know how to articulate it mm -hmm. as I do. And I feel like that's kind of how we're changing the world because the more voices you get out there, the more diverse it is, the more open it continues to grow. Um, I also do think in the future there are more things. I do think that there does need to be more women, like you say, on the production side of podcasting, mm -hmm. learning the tech side, learning what an RSS feed is, learning how to get all those things together. There are some women that do do that. I've learned how to do some of that stuff, you know, because of me and my husband, it's a two-man show, but there are even still even more that I need to learn how to do. And I think, you know, eventually you have people doing networks. Eventually I want to see women doing networks of podcasting mm -hmm. where, okay, you have your soul podcast and you have like kind of subsidiaries of them mm -hmm. that they're all connected. Men do that, but I want women to kind of do that too. So that's yeah. that's the future of where I see it going. Mm -hmm. Any other thoughts, uh, advice to yourself? <laughs> <laughs> what would you tell yourself? Advice to <laughs> ourselves. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, I don't know. Mm. I say keep on keeping on. And I say just keep making sure that you're making yourself proud, that you're you talked about other women. In my case, I think about my daughter. Keep on making decisions that you're proud to tell your daughter about when she's old mm -hmm. enough to hear about them. That's what I keep going back to. And for that matter, my son. Um, and and mainly myself. Just keep doing what makes you feel good and, and surrounding yourself with people who lift you up. And when you have to work with those negative people or difficult people, um, let it make you stronger and let it remind you of what you don't want to be and what you don't want to experience again and keep growing from every experience, whether it's a good one or a bad one. True. I think I would tell myself to be strong <laughs> Keep moving forward and always put yourself in a position where you can say no. Mm. Because that's particularly being a woman, that's very powerful. Mm. Put yourself in a position where you can say no and there's no repercussions or consequences to you saying no. Mm. Because the way it is designed, when you say no, a lot of times if people feel like they have power over you, they can flex that power. Versus you can say no and walk away and you can feel happy in the decision of walking away. Mm 